But let us now try and come to few other miscellaneous questions. Now, before we dig deep into those miscellaneous questions, I just want you to be knowing as to what has actually come from the cardiology side and the um, nephrology, I mean, neurology side, because it's my uh, like friends who have actually discussed cardiology and neurology, Nishant and Bashak, and I think both of them have done an excellent job, excellent, excellent job, because I myself watched their videos, have been really fun to watch their videos, really engaging videos and full of knowledge and understanding, concepts and understanding specifically. So when you look at the cardiology questions, you see many of the cardiology questions require only basic medical knowledge, but some of the cardiology questions require you to study from the cardiologist. That is why those topics that we have discussed last year, once again, we'll be giving a fresh list of topics. Those topics, please watch from the cardiology videos itself. Let us see. Class 3 antiarrhythmic drug given only IV. Class 3 antiarrhythmic drug given only IV is ebutylide. But again, that question is not a CEC question. If you watch the video, it's very easy or else you should have used it yourself. Some people have marked ranulosine, some people have marked sortalol. So you need a cardiologist understanding for that. Sudden cardiac death with normal echo. Sudden cardiac death with normal echo. Again, most people know Brugada. ARVD is the confusion, whether it is ARVD or Brugada. If you watched Nishan's videos, you know very clearly. Nishan keeps on mentioning the fact that right side of the heart you neglect, right side of the heart you neglect. So you can neglect and miss it, but you cannot miss it otherwise because ARVD is picked up on an echo. So Brugada is the answer. Again, it is an SS level question you have to watch. Physiological bar pathological J point elevation. Again, this is something that you can answer only if you have seen the video of a cardiologist. Again, a medicine level video will not help you. And physiological bar pathological J point elevation can be seen with hypothermia, hypercalcemia, brain injury. Most important causes of which they asked hypothermia. Just see again, very, very important. So these three questions without cardiologist help, you cannot answer. Inferior wall MI plus RV MI plus posterior wall MI, you have to give fluids, everybody knows. Restricting fluid was the option. So this question you can answer without knowing. But most people don't know why you give fluids. So okay, Nishan only made everybody else understand that it is RV not working. It is the RA that is stretching the reason we are giving fluids. So that is a very, very important thing which he has stressed from the beginning onwards. But a question you can answer without knowing. Heraclites and QT, hypomagnesemia, prolonging QT interval. Again, you need not study cardiology to answer. That's a simple question. Carpentier classification, again, core cardiology. You cannot answer that question question without knowing cardiology. See, so four questions now where you have to watch the cardiology videos itself. Heart block is caused by which organism that even if you watch you may not answer. It's a tough question. Diphtheria, Lyme, Chagas and HIV were the four options which is very tough because many people know Chagas and myocarditis, diphtheria, heart involvement, everybody knows. Lyme's myocarditis, you know, but heart block wise, how can you say? Answer is HIV. So that's a tough question. Uh, even if you watch everybody's videos also, finally it is luck only. So can't say that way. Severe AS, yeah, simple question. Even if you watch medicine level videos, you can answer that. Paradoxical split of S2 was the thing. CV waves and tricuspid regurgitation, again, very basic. Pansystolic marmor with hepatic pulsations, tricuspid regurgitation, again, very basic. PCI patient, hit, hit is ergotraban drug of choice, but in a PCI, it is bivalerudin. That is very, very important because, again, it is a cardiologist to answer that. RBBB with LFB ECG was given. It is like a simple ECG. I have taught you that whenever you have RBBB, you check for left axis deviation or right axis deviation. If it is left axis deviation or left toward axis, then you think that left anterior fascicle or posterior fascicle is involved. That is called bifascicular block. With that, if PR interval is prolonged, etc., you think of trifascicular block. Nishant has explained that in so much detail. Systolic stress proportional to LV pressure, lap places low. Again, so much so well explained in uh, Nishant's way. So if you actually watch cardiology in detail, you have this... Uh, Click you now so that you can answer these four or five extra questions which can actually make a lot of difference. Six, seven questions almost. These TR, AS, TR and all these things, everybody, I think even MD level knowledge, you can answer that. But the other questions, if you are able to answer, see for example, that Carpentier question if you get or hypothermia with physiological J-point elevation, pathological J-point elevation or a sudden cardiac death in Brugada or Ibutalide is the one given only IV. Those are rank determining questions. Okay. If you go to neurology that way, Contraindications to thrombolysis, I think everybody would have answered head injury. It's not something where you have to watch a neurology video. AVM bleed is intraparent chemical is something which he has stressed many times. Clinical question on demyelination, yes, patient having vision loss, complete recovery. That again, if you can see in his videos, he keeps on repeating that complete recovery after visual loss is demyelination, demyelination. So that with weakness is something which you can pick up. Asymptomatic plantar extensor with DTR absent was the tough question for the examiner. Many people thought it's a B12 deficiency. Even I thought myself that why this couldn't be 
MND, B12 deficiency. But asymptomatic in that setting to be means MND is the one to think about, which he has again mentioned very clearly. Paraplegia with the T9, T10, B were sign positive question. That I think even with MD level knowledge you can answer. LMN, UMN, dysphagia, MND questions, a simple clinical question. But see, once you develop that localization understanding now, then every question you can actually get it from there. That's why to watch his initial videos to develop localization understanding is the key. Cluster day giving oxygen, very easy question. Two questions on trigeminal and neurology, including superior cerebral artery. All that with basic medical knowledge you can. Alcoholic and Wernicke with ophthalmoplegia, global confusion, ataxia. Very easy question that. This is a tough question. Glute 1, 2 year old boy. That is again a core neurology question. Focal seizure, what do you look for? Medial temporal lobe epilepsy. Very simple question. Highest uh, hepatotoxicity is for valproate. Again, tough question. Myotonic dystrophy, that question with the image and all these things. CTG repeat was the question. That is again an easy question. Okay, tendon rupture with statins, guess again because other options were not pretty much in total. Molarate meningitis, classical HSV2 question. HIV clinical question with dementia, PMLE, which again Bashek has highlighted so many times. Botulism, you can either answer it from an ID perspective or you can answer it from clinical angle perspective where the descending symmetrical palsy is mentioned very clearly with diplopia. Biotinase deficiency, tough question. Delirium tremens, diazepam, ECC. What is Trotter syndrome? Again, mentioned it's a partly what do you say? ENT kind of thing with the esophageal and angiofibroma. But uh, even neurology, if you watched, you can. Trinucleotide repeat diseases. What are the diseases? I think that all of you know. Myotonic dystrophy, Kennedy's disease, Huntington's disease, scar, Frederick's ataxia, fragile X syndrome. Okay, which he has mentioned so many times. I have also mentioned so many times. Craniosynostosis and all with fused digit apart syndrome. Very tough question. That only leave it. Doesn't matter. Genetic questions, even if you get two of them wrong, it doesn't matter. That with the MBBS knowledge, if you can, you can. That's otherwise you cannot. Please don't go to preparing for all those things. Okay, it's all the biggest blunders that you can do. Harrison has so much of data. There's data in skin, there's data in psychiatry. All that we need not know, that is not what we are supposed to be knowing. What we should know are the things which help us to clear an exam, which help us to treat a patient and in people like me, things which help to treat, I mean, teach a student. Apart from that, nothing else is required. Now, pulmonology, in spite of being the big subject it is, you can see that the questions were actually speaking far and few. This is one question which is very tough, one of the tough questions in the exam. Male working in saw blade making factory. Interstitial pneumonia is chronic of tungsten carbide used. I thought it was berylliosis, but actually it is not berylliosis, it is cobalt. Because we have this entity called, see berylliosis is seen in people with high tech electronics, allies, ceramics, okay. And it, you know, it's an upper lobe disease, very granulomatous disease, very much similar to, very much similar to sarcoidosis and beryllium lymphocyte proliferation test is what we do. But now when you see, there is an entity called hard metal lung disease. Hard metal lung disease is exposure to tungsten carbide and cobalt and used as an abrasive or metal cutting tool causing diffuse interstitial fibrosis, asthma-like syndrome. This is hard metal lung disease. Tough question. Many people wrote berylliosis. I also would have personally written berylliosis. Only a pulmonologist would be able to answer this. Even not a routine pulmonologist, somebody who is used to teaching these kind of things. Another question was, hemo, a patient with breathlessness after a trip to the Himalayas, what will you do? So, everybody was looking for acetosolamide, it was not there in the options. So, let us see what is the update on this. Now, when you are having acute mountain sickness symptoms, headache with any additional symptoms, it is acetosolamide. Acetosolamide is not there in the option. To that, you can add oxygen, nifedipine or sildenafil. So, nifedipine is the answer here. Okay. So, again, a core pulmonology question. We are coming up with uh, pulmonology videos. I am very sorry to tell you that last time we started off with a person but he left midway because he couldn't continue with the thing. Now we have found out a person he started recording the videos in one month time videos are going to be live on the app and I think it's going to be wonderful prospectives from Calicut. So we are expecting uh, to launch his videos as early as possible. Hematology videos are now fully live. Oncology videos are now fully live. Critical care recording is going on and by December I think all the videos will be there in the app. And you know the question bank has also come. So we're trying to become number one. So in a core competitive race, you have to be number one. And unlike me, PG platform, which is not my child or anything, it is something I was the first person to teach there. But it is like somebody else's vision. Okay, we have just kind of given him the support. But this neat SS is basically my vision. So because it is my vision, it's something like uh, my child. It's very close to me. So we tried to do our best and we'll continue doing our best. And always your, uh, what do you say? Inputs are very, very valid. This is another question, which is again a very basic question. Dialysable toxin characteristic. We have told you so many times. Dialysable toxin should be in the blood. So it should have low volume of distribution. It shouldn't go somewhere else. 
it is, shouldn't be lipid soluble it should be water soluble so that again stays lipid solubility means increased absorption it should be diffusible that's why it should be a low molecular weight toxin so the most important characteristics of a dialysable toxin low molecular weight low volume of distribution low protein binding which you've seen under hemodialysis videos but you don't have to watch whole hemodialysis to answer these kind of things these are basic things and dialysable toxins always keep in mind this code called blast where b stands for barbitrate l stands for lithium a stands for acetaminophen, S stands for salicylates and A also stands for alcohol, okay, alcohol and T stands for theophylline. So, barbitrate, lithium, acetaminophen, alcohol, salicylates, theophylline, okay, and never do dialysis with avoid, okay, avoid means avoid dialysis in amphetamine toxicity, avoid dialysis with verapamil, avoid dialysis with organophosphatoxicity, Avoid dialysis with imipramine, that is um, TCA toxicity. Avoid dialysis with diazepam toxicity. Okay, that's it. Fine. So, we have done actually all these things. We have seen through all the questions. This is actually the second part of my discussion where I have seen the other chapters. We will come with one more discussion later on. That is on how to prepare for the next exam. Seeing all these questions and I mean, having seen all these questions, we will once again try to discuss on what are the core topics and what you have to be following with respect to the topic. What kind of videos I want you to watch after the new set of videos are released in the app. So, the new set of videos will be released in the app from head to foot. Medicine itself will be covering almost all the things. But the additional videos are the ones that are going to give you the edge. So, from those chapters, you watch the additional videos and people doing PG mandatorily watch neurology and cardiology videos please watch neurology cardiology videos because those neurology cardiology videos will keep you very strong with respect to the subject that you're day and day day and day day and day seeing because for a person who is working in a ward day and day day and day what he needs is cardiology neurology some nephrology knowledge and metabolism understanding that is what is actually most core and continue your strong preparation for INI we'll actually come up with more videos now before we actually wind up this this particular session I just want you to actually see on one more subject which I think has been asked only very little but most of the questions have been an overlap. I'll just show you this also hematology, Rye and Binet classification in CLLC. Rye and Binet classification of CLL I have discussed but in a much more detailed way hematologist has discussed so that you can see acquired von Willebrand disease is seen with myeloproliferative neoplasms. I have seen so many times mechanism of bleeding in PCRV is acquired VWD, acquired VWD. Again, if you have seen hematology videos, very easy to answer. Iron deficiency anemia, very simple question, so nothing much in that. Uh, then uh, Reed Sternberg cell image, very easy question. AML M3 has got good prognosis, everybody knows that. What are the bad prognostic features in AML? That is complex karyotype. That again is if you watched AML video, you know man. Everybody knows, no? 821 translocation, 1616 translocation, inversion 16, NPM1 mutation without FLT3 ITD. Those are the CBPM mutation by LE. Those are the good prognosis and everything else is bad. Drug with G6PD deficiency, nitrofurin one. Even basic VG level, my video is enough to answer that. Dual release criteria for PET. Again, if you watch, that's what I'm what I'm trying to say. If you watch those videos quickly and make notes, or if you just follow the notes in the app, you can get those extra questions. PCRV, but Cherry syndrome association, which I have said, everybody has said. Nitrates in water and met hemoglobinemia, which everybody knows, which is like core simple thing. Post transplant, we'll, we'll do a session on infections also when we come up with the next part because the infection session is going to be done by the ID specialist. 60 days post transplant, bone marrow transplant, what is the infection you get? I think that was a tough question because we have three parts to your bone marrow transplant. Pre-engraftment, engraftment, post-engraftment. So pre-engraftment is the first four weeks. Then you have engraftment, post-engraftment late is after the 100 day. So first four weeks, you're going to get more of gram negative infections correct because they're going to come from your catheter they're going to come from anywhere in the hospital but after 30 to 100 days if you get an infection it will be an opportunistic infection an opportunistic infection is mostly cmv and after 100 days very unlikely to get infections what are you going to get that time is going to be chronic gvhd only so this question was cmv it was a tough question again if you watch the hematology videos only you can answer that so from this what did you understand every chapter we are having tough questions from gastro also we will see later on we are having tough questions so those tough questions you can answer only with the help of the specialist. So watch the medicine videos in the order that we actually want you to watch, which I'll be again giving you once more. After that, see the videos which are mostly emphasized. I'll emphasize the videos that you have to see from cardio, the one that you have to see from neuro, the one that you have to see from hematology, the one that you have to see from gastro. Please do watch it. The one that you have to see from oncology, the one that you have to see from endocrine. That way you have to. And if you're following INI, going for INI means definitely everything you have to watch. Okay, so it is nice discussing all the questions with you. Hopefully, we can actually come up with more sessions in future. And the people who have followed the app, hopefully for them the exam was easy. And for the others also the exam was easy. Anytime, any help, please, please feel free to 
approach because PG learning is something that we do by ourselves. In our times, we had nobody to ask any of these things. Now you have the opportunity to do that. Please do feel free to. Thank you so much.